students today i will explain you regarding the hash of the period of pliocene pliocene is one epoch in this epoch you find a peculiar hash after the period of the what miocene miocene is also be one epoch during that period you find the hash not so well developed in comparison with the pliocene hash so by the end of the miocene the grazing horses are split into at least six fairly distinct lines okay and most of them retain three toes in their feet you find three toes are there that is an important character and by this character you can differentiate the but horse in different breeds not only the toes and teeth also another characteristic feature by which you can differentiate the but horses of the different but epochs and also periods okay and the three toed gazers because they are grazing so they call as grazers we are named as your hipparion neo hipparion nanipus again your pliocene horses will be initially differentiated into three distinct forms hipparion neo hipparion and nanipus okay and first of all you know about them then you also be know about the other types of the horses which are also be seen in the period of the pliocene okay those horses also be called as your pliocene horses let us know this three okay and these are the three toed grazing what horses or you call them as a grazers first of all you know about the aparium h i p p a r i o n aparium to reveal the fossil of the horse in that year you mark they are exhibiting some characters okay and all the horses which are remaining in the period of the pliocene and all these three have high crown grinding teeth in their mouth cavities okay they difference from from the your but the multipus the multipus also possessing the what the teeth in their mouth cavity they are possessing also tooth in their body but teeth are it will be different in massipus that is also be called as meri meri ipus meri ipus m e r y c h i p p u s meri ipus that is one variety of the pus on the period of what your miocene and you know miocene is one epoch in that time you find that times that is called as the what the meric epoch but they we are closely related and similar to each other after they persisted in the early your pliocene and later became extinct those animals who not be remain or prolong period okay at the latter stage of the latter pliocene 
they are going to be extinct. First of all, you know about the Hipparion. Before you know about the Hipparion, you first you know they are possessing the appendages in their body and at the foremost part of the trunk you find a pair of appendages. These are known as the furlings. In the furlings you find the carpals, metacarpals and also you find the what? The toes at the end. Okay? And in there you find three toes are there. And they are well differentiated. Carpals are remaining at the base. And you find the toes at its apex. You find how much toes in there? And three toes. Okay? Then, with the presence of the three toes, this kind of organism can be different from the others. Okay? And you will be seeing these diagrams in the blackboard laterally. I will show you. And then you know about the characteristic features of the, the Hipparion us, which are arising from, the, from your what? Matic hippus. And that is also we call as Meric hippus. And Meric hippus is present as one type of horse in the Miocene epoch. They we are differentiated under the two features such as teeth and toes. They possess some diversity characters. First character, teeth are usually straight, they are not curved, and they retain complete side toes as in the your meric hippus and it was about 40 inches in size that means 3 feet 4 inches and it was a great traveler also if you refer to this kind of organizing and on the fossil not a leaf state and they will be open in the your new world and they also be transported to the old world and so you can know it, it migrated immediately after it originated from the new world to the old world old world means Europe and Asia those areas are called as your old world that is, that is also be known as your Eurasia. Eurasia is a one combined term, is aggregatively called as Eurasia. When would be analyzed that term, from that term you find two different words. One is Europe, other one is Asia. These are the two continents, the remaining side by side, and they would be comes in contact with each other and by the, the presence of Alaska and also Siberia that is called as the land bridge and due to the presence of that bridge automatically the spaces can be but transported from one place to the another place and these flourished all over the Asia and Europe their remains occur in Pliocene strata from China to Western Europe and including India, Central Asia, Greece, Spain, etc. and also Africa up to Cap. And Hipparion was the first horse which entered in Africa. Before the horse would not come to the Africa. Hipparion was the first kind of horse which entered in Africa. Next point, in Africa during Pliocene, a branch of the Hipparion and the, your stylo Hipparion, it is one type. Okay, in the Pliocene, the branch of the Hipparion came to the as a distinct form in that Africa and that species will be named as 
स्टाइलो हिपरियन व्हाट इज दैट स्टाइलो हिपरियन स्टाइलो हिपरियन डेवलप एंड बिकेम डिस्टिंक्ट इन द एयर द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट द स्टाइलो हिपरियन सरफाइ इनटू द योर द प्लियोस्टी सिनी द प्लियोस्टी सिनी इन अफ्रीका टिल अप टू दैट टू बी सरफाइ एंड लीव अलोंग विद द योर with the immediate ancestors of zebra and zebra is also a form and that is also be evolved as a ancestor forms and they became extinct before the your recent and we are lost and see to our says in the world okay let us reveal very detail about them you no about the horse and also from the horse the zebra would be evolved up and zebra would be arise from the your stylo hipparian form and and zebra also be remain some species also be remain in nowadays but others are also be extinct and ancestor zebra also be extinct from the world and initially you find the ancestor zeb zebra they would not be remain in nowadays they already extinct and you mark there they became extinct before your recent and we are last three told fossils in the world okay the sunivel the diagram of it your hipparian
for your reference, I already cutted the hind leg of the perium. In the body of the horse, you must find the head towards the anterior. Then it is followed by the neck. Neck is a bridge like connective in between the head and trunk. Trunk is the massive part of the organizing. Towards the stall, you find the tail. Uchi tail. Okay? And trunk bears anteriorly a pair of limbs. Those limbs are called as four limbs. Likely. Another pair of limbs also be dangling towards the downward and that is very much strong and stout. They would be called as the hind limbs. A pair of fore limbs and a pair of hind limbs are present in its That means two pairs of limbs are remain in their bodies. They are categorized as the your fore limbs and the hind limbs. Initially, I shall explain about the hind limbs which are present at the distal end of the trunk. And you mark and this bone is the what the bones of the your hind just at the before the beta tarsals in fact the tarsals are there tarsals will be remain in there these are the tarsals okay and after the tarsals you find the beta tarsals beta tarsals connected with the phalanges okay and this is the your foot and the entire one okay and you find like this and this is the one peculiar character generally possessed by the organizing named as the your what? your hipparian husk which runs under the your what, epoch of the pliocene ok you know the what, figure of the your hind limb of the hipparian then you know about the your family of the hipparian Okay. When you come to the your right, the hyperion or leg, it looks like this. Very elongated, the beta carpals of should be present in there. See the picture, and both the lateral sides you find the phalanges will be arised.
to the view.
Alipius, okay? Then you find Leo Hippus, Leo Hippus, okay? After it, you find the Hippus. you have seen during that period and let us know about detail about these types of the horses and which are available in the Pliocene. Okay? And let us know detail about them. Your, your Canipius, the first one, already three I also described to you. The next three will also be comes under it and it will be named as 4 and 5 as well as 6. To find the 6 variants, totally 3 already respect by me and let us know about the your Calipus, C A L I P T E S. The members we are originated from your Melchipus and carried the characters like the your Leo Ipus and they have teeth like those Leo Ipus and they were very small in size or pygmy form. They survived from the late Miocene to early Pliocene. Before of this epoch, that one epoch is known as what? Miocene, M I O C E N E. The present after it. The epoch is known as your Pliocene, P L I O C E N E. Okay? And you find these horses in the what period of the Pliocene, and that is one epoch. In that epoch, you find these species. Then, next, you know about the your Pliohippus. Pliohippus. I already described about the your Calipus, and then you know about the Pliohippus. Let us know about them. The members who are originated from the your Merikipus in the late Miocene. They had teeth which we are increased in length more than the your Merikipus. It was the first one told us before the you one told us was not present in there. From that period the one told us arrived. The presence of peculiar feet in front of the eye are feet and they had shoulder height was 40 inches that means 3 feet 4 inches height would be generally calculated at the place of the your fur limb and at the place of the your shoulder girdle which one is called as the pectoral girdle and in there and from that height it would be measured to the ground and that is the here the 40 inches that means 3 feet and 4 inches okay this is the description regarding the Leo Hippus let us know about the Equus the Equus is the last variety of the Leo Sydney epoch and this kind of horse is the generally origin the modern horse which you have seen nowadays in our locality those horses are arising from the your Equus Okay, which you have seen in the what? In the period of the Pliocene. Okay, and the equus arose at the end of the Pliocene from the your Pliohippus. Before of that time of the equus, you know the Pliohippus was there, and the earliest species of the equus in the North America have similar teeth as most of these. The latter forms they have been placed in a separate subgenus that is named as the equus. Equus means the that variety you have seen in the right in Plesipus. P L E S I P P E S Plesipus. And from the Plesipus, and more advanced horse equus also be 
arose in the America and migrated from there to the old world. You know the old world means your Asia and also Europe. Europe and Asia, that is called Eurasia. In that period you find, okay, that one. And it was remains. We are found in the your Pleistocene and deposits everywhere. And equus that is called as your Pleistocene, 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 P-E-U-S. Also we appear in the early your Pleistocene of the Europe and South America had no horse up to the middle of the Pliocene and in late Pliocene some advanced your Pleohippus migrated to the South America through the Isthmus of the Panama. Panama is one capital of the Mexico country nowadays. Okay and before it would be connecting with the South Africa and in there you find the one straight and it is very difficult to cross it and previously there was a strait and which was not crossable and there they evolved rapidly into the three distinct types and which were only confined to the South America. One amongst them was the your Hippidion's short leg. Hippidion is a short leg, one toad and Philohippus. Okay, and the other two oh yeah, you are known as the Orohippidium and the last one is known as your Hyperhippidium. And Hyperhippidium otherwise called as Parahipparium and in the your Pleistocene, the modern horses equals also be entered in the South America and replaced the older immigrants after the ice age in the early recent times and the horses became a mysterious sexting in the America. Okay, and this is the description regarding the your thylogeny of what horses. Okay.